Edgy Slam where we take about five minutes to um, interview some of the most innovative teachers and teaching products from around the world. I'm Holly Clark from San Diego. And I'm Tanya Averitt from Montreal. Uh, Lisa, take it away. Hi everyone, so thank you Tanya and Holly for having me. I'm really excited to be here and today I'm going to speak with you both about B-Contact, uh, which is the company that I work for and it is a, I'm just going to try and connect now to start a screen share so you'll tell me if it's working. Do you see my iPad? We're about to, yeah, we see it. Perfect, okay, great. So I figured the best way to tell you about what the product is and how it works is to just do a demonstration. So right now this is live from the app and I'm going to start a recording and quickly share with you what the context is and how it's currently being used in K-12. Okay, I think we need to stop. Um, Tanya, do you see her thing? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I'll cut that out. Keep going. Keep going? Mm -hmm. Okay, give me one second. Okay, so what you're watching now is a live demonstration, and this is a presentation that I've prepared and opened up in the B Context app. And what the B Context iPad app allows you to do is it records content from your iPad. Our content management platform then distributes your content and it allows your viewers to interact with it while it also while you're empowered to monitor their engagement. So essentially, it allows you to add context to content. Uh, you start by uploading any type of static file, which can be a PowerPoint uh, or PDF presentation. For example, this can be a lesson plan or a digital textbook that you have. And then you let the app do the rest. So it will capture your voice, any annotations or highlights that you add, and you can also import web screenshots or additional images. Once you make the recording, it's saved on our server and it's played back from any browser that supports HTML5. So it's super easy to share. The file size is one tenth the size of video, so it uses a lot less bandwidth. And you can actually email this file you know, directly to a student or parent. You can share it on social channels like Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. You can share it in class groups that you create in the app, or you can create an embed link that you can upload to an LMS website or any blog. You also are teachers are empowered to monitor how the students are learning, and they have analytics, so they can see exactly who, for where, and for how long a student's watched a file that they've created. And we're also developing the ability that teachers will be able to insert test questions at any point in time into a recording. And the students will have to answer those questions, and the teacher will get an instant snapshot of who's understanding the material and who needs more help. And that should be released by the end of this month. So I wanted to quickly go over a few examples of how the context is currently being used in K-12. The number one use is that teachers are just recording a lot of content that they're sharing with their students. So this is an example of a teacher who's actually capturing all of her lessons in class. And the reason why this is great is that often when a student is absent from class, it's really difficult for them to catch up on the material. And the only option they have is to read the lessons they missed from home. But this particular teacher actually solved that for the students by using the context to record the classes, um, including the material from the textbooks, as well as the questions and comments that her students are making in class. So this is really great because she shares this with her school's LMS, and everyone in class is always on the same page. They can reference the lesson at any time, and then students who are absent that day um, can also access this from home. This is a teacher who is spoken to the 8th grade math class for the first time, and he's simply making short recordings on certain things that he's covering in class, and then using the class time to go over specific examples and to do homework with the students. Then we also have teachers who are providing really personalized homework and test help. So this is an example of an 8th grade math teacher who has her students email her problems that they're, having, uh, that they're struggling with, and she will solve them live in the app and then share them back with them on a class website. So it's really, it's almost like tutoring a one-to-one -one help for a test or when they are doing homework um, that they can see at home. Then we also have teachers who are creating content for other teachers. Um, this is an example of a fourth grade teacher who made a recording about a subject and a lesson that she taught that worked really well for her that she wanted to share with her colleagues. 
In certain environments, we also have students who are creating content. Uh, this is an example in a Spanish class, and this is a teacher who had his students write questions in Spanish and record the pronunciation for the question as well as the answer. And this helped them learn various intonations for asking questions, and more importantly, it gave them a way to hear themselves played back. So it was much easier for the teacher to correct them, and they had a digital record of their, of their pronunciation. We also have students who are using this for digital storytelling, which can be a really valuable learning experience because it blends skills like public speaking and use of technology. So these are little stories that um, kindergartners made, and they uploaded the pictures into the context, and they recorded the little narrative that they shared with the class. We also have students who are using Slack to demonstrate their understanding of concepts. So this is coming from a first grade math class, and it's actually students who are doing these demonstrations and submitting it to the teachers. Um, and it's really useful because the teacher is able to see the methodology, methodology and see if her students are actually understanding the process for solving these problems. So just, just to summarize, I want to quickly go over some cool facts about our technology. The first is that this is a completely private way of creating and sharing content. So it's, you're providing a really secure environment for your class where the content is private um, and your students have a safe place to create, collaborate, that stays within this group. The second is that we're platform agnostic. So you can watch this content from iPad, from a laptop or PC, and you can also share it a bunch of different ways, like email, private groups, embed links, or you can even convert it into a video. Last is that we have a lot of interactive features, so students can pause the playback of a recording at any point in time and insert either a question or a comment. Comments are public and students can collaborate on them. Questions are emailed privately back to the teacher. So that is it for the presentation. Uh, I hope this helped and now you've got a little taste of the context. Um, Lisa, thank you. That was fantastic and very, uh, it seems like a really cool app. I can't wait to explore it more. I've been meaning to explore it, but time has gotten away with me, but I am really excited to try it. Um, uh, can you tell us about um, how people would get this app? What ways? Absolutely. It's a free download in the iTunes store. Uh, you can create content publicly without any restrictions. The only reason you would move to, or that's worth moving to pro subscription, is if you're deploying this really in class. You can then create private groups where you can add all of your students and automatically share content with them. And pro use also gets you unlimited creation of private content. So that's really important if you have students who are creating content, or if you're doing this regularly, uh, just to have it be unlimited. Um, Tanya, can you see her, or is it just my connection? Uh, no, um, Lisa, you have to take uh, off the screen share. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, this is a. This seems like a really interesting app. I'm very excited to check it out. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Oh, um, and uh, I have one other question: Is it subscription based, or like, did you a did you answer that already? Because I was trying to figure out if I could see you. But no, I'm sorry, I don't think I did. I was just very happy to get on and off the screen for six hours. <laughs> but uh, it is subscription. Uh, it's subscription start, or they are four dollars and ninety nine cents per month. And then if you purchase a package for a year, it drops to three dollars and fifty cents per month. And then if it's deployed on an institutional level, there's customization. So if, if there are schools who are doing things that are one to one, we can help them with that and depending on the users that they have. If it's 15 more, then we can do a package of them. Okay. Awesome. Well, I look forward to meeting you in Boston and um thank you very much. That was awesome. Another great uh app that's coming down the um the pike, I guess, or it's already here, but uh I get really excited about really good ones. You can ask subtext about that. But um, okay, so thank you very much, and I will see you soon. Thank Thanks, you, Lisa. Thanks.